Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there for our first deck of the day today, which is going to be Bant Familiar. It's been a while since we've played this deck, uh, not changing too much from it. Basically, sideboard, uh, I switched up for like kind of the current metagame. And we've I have kind of like a, a large collection of different cards um, in here. We got like Entrancing Melody for Sultai or for Aggro. Uh, Frilled Mystic for Control or uh, Nexus, Binding for just a, a kind of just a, a wide variety of decks. Uh, a lot of mostly decks that don't remove enchantments very often and have threats that we want to be able to get. A Knight of Autumn and Crushing Canopy can destroy some Wilderness Reclamations, and Crushing Canopy can destroy some Tempest Gens as well. And we got some Counter Spells and Baffling End for Aggro over there. So have a a pretty full sideboard. You know, a lot of different cards there. The one change I'm making in the main since the last time we played this, which was a few weeks ago, was I had deputy, two Deputy Detentions in this Jade Light Ranger slot, and I'm just not very thrilled with Deputy Detention these days. The one thing that Deputy is... Like, the reason why Deputy is a little bit better in this deck than what it kind of normally is is because we have Shalai that can protect it. So that's pretty nice, you know, having those three Shalais there. I'm going to have to get some more water here in a little bit. Um... So that that's something there, but I I feel like our deck could kind of use some more uh, card advantage and smoothing out the draws and everything, and so I'm playing two Jade Lights instead. So basically, we are an Angel deck here with our, as you can see, four Resplendent, three Shalai, three Lero, and an Angel of Grace. We're an Angel deck with um, the uh, Adapt sub-theme for the beginning part we have our growth chamber guardians our incubation druids and we have three familiars to go along with both of those because not only does familiar reduce the cost on the our two adapting cards with incubation druid making this three mana to adapt growth chamber guardian making this one mana to adapt but then also the angels or splendid angels activated ability would only cost four and Shalai's activated ability only costs four with biomancer's familiar in play in fact, if we have two Biomancers familiar in play, we can start activating Shalai for just GG. So that's pretty nice. So that's what we got going on. Let's give it a try. Hey, what's up, Gatsby? And Jojen Reed. Thank you. Not ranked draft. I started a draft earlier today. I uh, turned some of the, the gold into gems with a draft. Was my thinking. But then but then honestly thinking about it more. Because uh, I was thinking about that because of the the new update that's going to hit on Wednesday. Where you can spend gems for uh, you know cosmetic upgrades basically. But then kind of looking at it more. Uh, I don't think it's a, a very good... Basically, I think I should just be keeping my 5,000 gems and use, or sorry, the 5,000 gold that it usually costs there. This is for myself, not necessarily saying that other people should be doing this, but for myself. I should be spending the gold now on uh, on the new cards. Like whenever War of the Spark comes out, I'll just spend all my gold on packs and save the gems for the cosmetic stuff. So blue and green is what our opponent's playing. Likely Simic Nexus, but kind of hopefully not. Because Lyra is very good against aggro decks. Unfortunately, it does not look like our opponent is playing an aggro deck. Alright, so... Going to just keep Angel of Grace up or activate Incubation Druid with my opponent... You know, just having Island Island Forest, they could certainly have like Sinister Sabotage there. So I want to just result, you know, I don't want them to be able to counter my spell, so I'll just resolve this Angel of Grace while I can. Alright, so I can spend my, my mana to activate Incubation Druid and attack for 8. Problem is, is this turn it's eight. Next turn it's eleven. I do not have a two-turn clock. No, I don't have Deckmaster up. Sorry. So 
So... I think let's go with... Let's go with the Lyra. Alright, Deckmaster should be up now. Basically, I, I don't want them just to be able to just chain insights. So I don't really mind throwing stuff into counter magic to keep them from casting Chemister's Insight there. Hey, what's up, Badonk? <laughs> this is incredible. Cast Chemisters Inside and Grow Spiral and can still cast another Nexus of Fate. It's just incredible. Just so much mana. No, I don't think wilderness will ever be will ever be banned. We just can't win this. Yeah, we we can't win this. Hey Wagner. Good afternoon. Insights just represents too many cards. Wilderness Reclamation is too much mana. I don't, I don't think we have a chance anymore. Just spent 24 mana that turn. I've had seven turns. They've already spent 24 mana in a turn. And are taking another one.
So let's try Binding, Disdainful Stroke, Negate, Canopy, Knight of Autumn, Frilled Mystic. You know, like our whole sideboard. We'll see how it works out. I'm going to cut the... Uh... Alright, we have a lot of things to cut. So Baffling End is going to be out. And... Uh... Shall I can go... Angel of Grace is an instant, which is nice. It's like if we're holding up mana for Frilled Mystic or Negate or Disdainful Stroke or whatever, we can play Angel of Grace. That is pretty nice. Alright, let's give this a try. I think I'm going to try this, even though we have three dead cards. Just because we have Crushing Canopy? No, it's Mulligan. I'm going to keep three dead cards. Jack Nolly, I've been doing it for months. All right, so it doesn't look the, you know, we we have a lot of mana, which is good whenever we have counter spells, I suppose. Are they gonna have like, are they gonna have a counter spell that only costs one blue? I guess that's possible that they do. I need to turn on the light behind me. It's dark in here. Why would you tap the creature that I'm adapting? Why would you not tap the other one? Wild, no one knows the wilds like I do. Crasis does make us tap out. That's probably fine. So I don't I can't counter I can't counter a reclamation here, but we have the Vivian in play that could destroy the reclamation, so not the biggest of deals. Alright, they are missing land drops. Comes. That's about the best we can hope for. So I have either Frilled Mystic or Incubation Druid. The wilds are my shield. Okay. And Growth Chamber Guardian should be able to get us a, a decent amount of um, we'll get some more creatures. We are shuffling. We had one Frill Mystic towards the bottom that we get to shuffle back, which is good.
Nature brings your reckoning. I don't know. I don't need a I don't need to play Night of Autumn. Yeah, I'm just playing this growth chamber guardian they already know about. There we go. Manalik says, what has to be done to get this deck banned? Does it have to win tournaments, a certain number of tournaments in a row or something? There's not really any guidelines for things to get banned. Over, overall, um, Wizards is very adverse to banning cards and something pretty cat catastrophic has to happen like basically the the format has to be very unhealthy for anything to get banned that's that's the main thing and and people have to stop playing the format and it being unhealthy for for them to ban anything when when people aren't playing the format that's when banning start happening And that's to try to, and the banning is, the bannings are to just try to, whatever would get banned, like I, as we had Ferocidon was banned before. That was something that was just, you know, like to try to even the playing field between different decks. I kind of want to play an Entrancing Melody to take Krasis. That's probably not necessary, but I kind of want to. Maybe I should board out Angel of Grace. No. Hey, what's up, Zephyrs? Nexus is leaving standard in... Uh, let's see what's well, March. It's so like April, May, June, July, August, September. So seven months. I don't think anything's going to happen to Nexus in those seven months. You know, certainly nothing's happening before the next set releases. You know, who knows after the next set releases, if... Man, it's so hard to mulligan four, four lands and good lands and three spells. It's just these spells don't matter. It's really hard to mulligan that, though. Because, I like, if I keep this, I just play a couple three threes, and they just, they just kill me. I guess this is basically the exact same thing. Thanks, Mr. Knot. And I don't know. It's rough, though. So it certainly seems like they have a counter spell since they are shocking in there. And I'd rather have the Jade Light Ranger get countered here, the Knight of Autumn. I want the Knight of Autumn to be able to destroy that as Kanto and or destroy a Wilderness Reclamation. Alright, so it does not look like they have a Wilderness Reclamation, so let's just go ahead and try this, because we'll have Vivian next turn. That's unfortunate. So, 
We don't want Vivian to get countered, of course. But... I mean, so I could, like, just pass with Frilled Mystic available. They cast this Insight. I counter Insight. We just give them another turn to find counter magic. Let's draw and fire. As Kanto is about to flip. Problem is, I my shields are down now for Wilderness Reclamation. Please don't have one. Ugh. They had one. Come to me. Just another one? Three chemistry's inside is very, very bad for us. Their best card draw spell. I've already found three of them. They had to ditch a Frilled Mystic. Or they didn't have to, but at least they, they did to draw two. That's a good card for me to see them discard. Big question is, if we untap here, do I get... Do I get rid of Vivian to kill Reclamation? Last turn they didn't. They didn't even use the extra mana last turn. I kind of feel like the answer is no. We can possibly find Knight of Autumn. That would be the best card that we could plus Meet and find my here. Newest friend. Jade Lot's not bad. Could have shocked in and had Frilled Mystic up first. But I wanted to see if I wanted to see like what kind of land I would get with the Jade Light, see if we get like a forest or anything. I guess I was expecting more Sinister Sabotage than Frilled Mystic from my opponent there. At least the good news is we have fought through three insights, which is, you know, a really crucial card for them to have. We have fought through three of those. This is nothing.
Can't really let them have another Frilled Mystic to like attack Vivian there. So that's their third Frilled Mystic. Next is just Cycles. The thing, definitely the thing to be worried about with myself I've minusing the break someone like you. Vivian like that um, is an Ascanta. They could have just played like an Ascanta there. They have yet another Frilled Mystic. No. Those Crushing Canopies have not been good for our opponent. Alright, sideboard worked. We had, you know, 13 cards to bring in from our sideboard. And it worked out. One and zero now with Ban Familiar. Oh, I wanted to put this there. I forgot to put my little reminder. So tomorrow, so no stream tomorrow. But then we have a 12-hour stream Monday from 12 to 12. Doing that for hitting 2,000, uh, for 2,000. YouTube subs. There you go. Alright, so there's a couple little reminders. No stream tomorrow. We're going to be doing a fantasy baseball draft during the day. <laughs> oh, thank you, Logistics Man. Thank you for being here. And... And so there we go. We have a little bit of update of what's going on in the next two days. All right, our five lander is turning into even more and more lands, which is which is not only good that we're just drawing three lands here, but then it's our opponent is likely going to hit a bunch of spells with Eva Sanity. Which is less good for us. So whatever that is, whatever they took, it's better than Jade Light Ranger. Oh, they have their own Shalai, Sex Thief. <laughs> and then of course we draw the Baffling End. Right after that, Baffling End is a dead card now because of Shalai. That was a brutal game. Alright, so I do want the other baffling end. And I don't know about binding though, because you know like they're playing mortifies, but they mortify a baffling end, they get a 3-3. You know, that's kind of whatever. I don't hate entrancing melody. That can be kind of expensive though.
But I want to have as many an answers to like deputy detention even as well. I don't really love any of our other cards. So I guess I'm just bringing in a baffling end and I'm going to take out a familiar or a jade light. Like a familiar. I don't think the the two mana 2-2 two -two is going to matter too much against a hero precinct one deck. <laughs> you thought it was a lighthouse? Could use some better that's that's one thing that I am planning on um, paying somebody to make a better tie badge, better looking one that's more recognizable. Yeah, you're saying molt. Yep, on page with you. Bib, yeah, I think that was a mulligan as well. Six card hand isn't my favorite, but you know, it's, it's what we got. This Thought Razor takes the Resplendent Angel. Okay. Fours are pretty big. Hey, Danny Fox, good evening. I could basically see a reason to take any one of our three cards in hand, honestly. Like, Krasis just replaces itself next turn. If they don't have the removal, Growth Chamber Guardian can keep on getting more, and that would be annoying. So I could see taking that. I could see taking Resplendent Angel. That's just kind of like a large creature. So yeah, basically it's all the reason for taking any of those. So they'll probably need to save this mor a Mortify for the Lyra. That's a really annoying Bell Haunt. That's a very, very annoying Bell Haunt. Yeah, what a, that's a great card there. Sad that, like, Krasis is the card that I'm thinking about discarding. I hope they have Mortify and not Hostage Taker. Or neither would be the best. Yeah, those Bell Haunts, haunts are killer. July? Dang. Alright, looking for removal. Hmm. Problem with the Resplendent Angel, like it's, like assuming they have Hostage Shaker on the Lyra, the Resplendent Angel is kind of not going to do anything. If they don't have Hostage Taker, the Resplendent Angel is good. You know, if they even if they have like Mortify, like it's good to have the Resplendent Angel. So this is a this is a really tough one.
We go graveyard. Please don't have hostage taker. All right. Deputy is not as bad as hostage taker, but there goes Lyra. Definitely wish I would have had that resplendent angel now. That was tough. That's probably going to cost us this game here. We'll see if we can find a baffling end. Come on. Why did they hit Shalai both times? We drew probably our best card we could draw. Hope they don't have Mortify. No, oh, attack with that deputy. Come on. Attack with deputy. So three, six, seven, eight, nine, fourteen. Puts us down to five. I may need to block Shalai, honestly. Like, blocking Shalai turns on Baffling End. I didn't live through hell to lose to you. No one said restoration was painless. And of course we're taking lethal here. Could have used them attacking with that deputy. That would have been nice. Alright, so I took out all... Used to have four Takali Honor Guards in my sideboard, took them out, and that certainly killed me, taking those Takali Honor Guards out, because the Bell Haunts were awesome, and then obviously Deputy Deputy Hostage Taker were very good when I had no hand anymore because of the Bell Haunts. So, just a, just a couple of very good games for the opponent of like, kind of having like the best cards they could have every single turn and we got crushed all right let's go ahead and give this a try We're going to have a lot of Krasises. We're not going to have as many Krasises. Take the Baffling End. Do it. This one. That's a big dinosaur on there. Look at that dinosaur. You don't deal with that. Wish I could get permanent. Wish I could get this Ascanta here. Keeping that card on top really quickly.
Could be another Thought Erasure. Could be the fourth land. Another Thought Erasure. Keeping that card on top as well. So I can just cast the Krasis right now and draw three. Check that. Draw two. Or... Or I wait a turn. And we draw an extra card if I wait a turn. They're not kind of the fourth Thought Erasure, are they? It's really possible they have a thought, fourth Thought Erasure. They kept Kaya's Wrath before with the three land. Hmm. All right, so we're still drawing two cards with Krasis like we would have last uh, turn. So we still we would have drawn two cards last turn. We're drawing two again, but now they use the Mortify on Incubation Druid and didn't use Mortify on Krasis. So that's kind of good for us. And we'll have them deal with this crisis. And whenever they do, I'll have Angel of Grace. Play around absorb. So they still have five spells in hand. We got this this 2-2. Two -two. Gonna kill our opponent real quick. Hmm. We do have lethal here. We activate Shalai. Shalai's activation only costs four mana, so it's not like we spend all, our entire turn activating Shalai. Or I can also play a Johnny. That's not bad. Keeps them from playing a removal spell for another turn. I 
Hey, Joe Bags. Good afternoon. Well, they found they finally found that second white source. Their plan was Kaya's wrath, but their auto tap with Chemistry's insight tapped a white source. So counter magic in baffling end out. Mystic in Lyra out. Familiar out. Canopy in. And let's go with this. Going with uh, Canopy because they're going to bring in Thief of Sanity because every single Esper player brings in Thief of Sanity every single matchup. Even though we have a lot of flyers that just block Thief of Sanity, they'll still just bring it in. And Canopy can also destroy his Kanta besides Thief. <laughs> Some people just play the Thieves main deck. You don't see that too often in the control decks. Because they're trying to blank removal game one and then play it in game two. But the plan kind of works as long as your opponent isn't expecting it as much. All right, let's see if they have it on turn three or not. Auto Razor works too. Got to get that first to be able to protect. So this says Kanta is going to kind of take over because you know, we have the Frilled Mystic here, but our opponent can just sit back and let the Azkanta do its thing. So it's not great for us. No, 12 hours tomorrow. Or Monday. 12 hour streams Monday. We did a 12 hour stream yesterday. We're doing one on Monday for the 2,000 YouTube subs. Uh, we did one yesterday for getting to the 20 quip referrals. And so now we're at 22 quip referrals. So we're, we're on our way there towards the next goal. But we'll have it. So no stream tomorrow, but another 12 hour on Monday. And so these are our these are our goals here for our next 12 hour streams. Hmm. Certainly taking frilled mystic, I would think. Like if I just frilled mystic this. Oh, they cannot Kaya's Wrath. They only have one black source. Disdainful Stroke is the take. Interesting.
Hmm. So if they have like Kaya's Wrath plus Counter Spell, like Kaya's Wrath plus Absorb, for example. Eldest Reborn? Whatever. Drawing our other Frilled Mystic here is pretty nice. Man, Frilled Mystic is really good. Our two wins coming against Control and Nexus. Our sideboard Frilled Mystics took a big part. Good big key parts in winning both of those matchups. Yeah, our opponent gonna win there. Even if I don't have my other frill even if I don't have the second frilled mystic. They they couldn't win there. It's the exact same hand. I didn't want to keep it last time. I don't want to keep it again. So, what is this hand going to beat? Could we beat like an aggro deck maybe with the double baffling ends? You know, we have a scry and we're on the draw. So we get a look at three cards before our second turn. Let's see if we hit that second land. Uh, we need green mana. Sorry, Resplendent Angel. It's a good card. Hey, G Biscuit Games. I kind of wish I would have kept the. Uh, The other hand. So the good news about them putting the counter on the Terramander is that... Like, is it a May or is it just... Yeah, an up to one. So they don't have to. So now they are they can't ever adapt that Terramander anymore. So it's just going to be a 2-2. We don't have to worry about it getting really big later on. <laughs> That's true. They could entrancing melody my familiar, and then tap the familiar for the terramander, and then adapt it. So I guess I guess it is possible for this terramander to be adapted. I suppose. So adapt says if this creature has no one one counters on it, then put the one one counters on it. So. It already has a 1-1 one -one counter on it. It cannot be adapted. I think we would have had a lot better chance on our 6-card hand. Of course, we, we obviously we need to find a white source with the six-card hand. I mean, it was a one-lander. We need to find lands, but 
if we would have found lands. I liked our chances there. No, no Harpooners in the 75. I think... I mean, I like my Mono Blue matchup without him. I wanted other stuff for the sideboard. Obviously, we're on a mold of five here. That, you know, like, they're on the play with turn one creature, turn two counter spell for my two drop. And then finding Curious Obsession. You know, obviously, we're losing this game, but... I want them to use a white mana and a green mana. I want to use a green and a white mana. And cast this growth chamber guardian. How do I do that? Turn off auto tap. It's still just... <laughs> It automatically took it, but at least it took at least it took the way I wanted it to. But automatically did it still. Yeah, the 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 full prior I guess I have to turn off auto tap and do full control. So I have to do both. Except I've, I've tried the do full control before and that didn't work. So now I tried the auto tap and that didn't work. So you have to do auto tap plus full control. That's a huge hassle. If you just want to. If you just want to tap some some specific lands or use use specific mana that's in your mana pool. I guess is what I mean there. So could have could have cast a lot bigger crisis. Yeah, I think that's I think that's what we used the I think that's the situation that it was a problem for us last time was Priest of the Forgotten Gods and um and gutter bones and stuff and you know like you like with priest of the forgotten gods has the two black where you want to use one of the black and the red so i think that's that's what it is you have to turn on f full control plus plus you have to turn off auto tab it's not just so it's not just you using the, land like manually tapping for your lands that's easy but it's whenever you are already have mana in your mana pool something that adds a lot of mana in your mana pool like incubation druid does or with priest of the forgotten gods has it how it adds two black and you want to use one of the black plus one of your lands i don't really know why i'm still playing this we can't possibly win. Kind of seeing what my opponent does here. Okay, let's get that other baffling end in. The melody, the canopy, all the negates. 
And I actually like binding. Let me get those in also. So Johnny's out. Familiar and Jade Light are out. And this is 62. We have to take two other cards out. Could just take out the two Vivians. The Vivian's not bad. That could certainly be my cut, though. See, the Vivians are the bindings. Those are my worst two cards, are Vivian and Binding. Oh, get that Glacial Fortress back in here. What are you doing, Fortress? Ooh, opponent's on five this time. We were on five last time, last game. Now they're on five. I like having Incubation Druid basically all the time, but in particular matchups that we have our counter magic, like where we can, because having Incubation Druid makes it so we can start double spelling a lot faster, having like Resplendent Angel plus Negate, for example. Respond. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is. Yep, theme song's playing. Not dead yet. So if I block with Druid, it keeps them from drawing a card. So basically, do I want to sacrifice Druid to make them discard a random, like basically discard a card kind of thing? You know, instead of them drawing the five, like. I don't think so. Let's go no blocks. We'll let them draw a card. I think Druid's pretty important. Or whenever you have crises later. I don't even need to cast this baffling end. I could have just blocked with a 3-5 incubation druid. This is just a waste. It's too late now. I should I don't even need to do this. Really should just pass the turn. That was just a complete waste of a baffling end, because if they have like a Tempest Gin, now I don't have a baffling end for that. That was not a good play. Yeah, negate negate for uh retort. I don't mind that trade at all. That's that's a good trade for me. Alright, so last time they auto-tapped the Incubation Druid that was being adapted, so making sure we get to adapt plus Resplendent Angel. Yeah, but now we have Ixalan's Binding for a gen, so even better. Ooh. Hmm.
They take my Incubation Druid. It's going to be kind of tough. Now they have a ton of mana. They could have another Melody and Melody my Resplendent Angel, and that'd be really bad. At least we get one Jin out of there. Unfortunately, we're not getting both Jins. Gonna have Negate up still in case my opponent has a Curious Obsession. We can beat those cards. Yeah, or another melody. Okay. Let's see. So now we can have Druid. I'm shocking here so I can play Druid and I can spend my five mana and activate the other Incubation Druid. Well, all the while keeping Negate available. Looks like we're going to a game three. So Resplendent would trade with Jin and Storm Tamer if I activate it. I can't really see how that's a bad trade for us. I can see how that would be a bad trade for us. If I pump in response, it'll just lose it, right? Like, doesn't it just lose? I think it just loses it. So we think it'll lose the life link, but not the plus two plus two, because that's not an ability. Okay, good. So, it loses the life link, and it's now on the ground, so it can be double blocked by the ground creatures. So at least we, we take out the Incubation Druid instead of taking out nothing. Attack for Charter Course. I would think they'd have a dive down here. Now the Incubation Druids are the biggest thing around. Okay, going to game three.
Was Binding better than Vivian? See my opponent having like bounce spells in their deck. <laughs> Thanks, Zephyrs. Think binding no binding is not better than Vivian. It's a tough call. I do like how Vivian gets Vivian's tick up is really good. I'm gonna play Vivian instead. Because Vivian's tick up can find us more Krasis. Krasis is awesome. You know, if either resolve, it's good for us. It's just not very easy to have either resolve. It's a little easier to have binding resolve. Oh. I mean, if they have one drop Curious Obsession, we're dead with this hand. Gosh. This hand's good if we draw lands. Come on, land. Oh, not you. At least, you know, with the scry and on the draw. Kept it how we get to look at three cards before our second turn. Unfortunately, first card was a brick, second card's a brick. Hopefully, third card's not another brick. Hooray! Not a brick. That was a very good one. This worked out. An opponent's stuck on just the two lands, so we know our creature's resolving. That's big time. Yeah, now the druid was awesome for us. So those are... Ended up being two very good draws. Could just melody the Terramander there, but we're not really looking at having eight mana anytime soon. I would like them to use their counter magic here. Love it. Please don't draw a land. We can entrancing melody that thing. Love it. Now, my opponent still owns the Curious Obsession. It's going to fall off this turn. Cause, so, like, it's it's still my opponent's Curious Obsession. So it still says at the beginning of the end of your, as in Bill's end step, if you didn't attack with a creature this turn, sacrifice. Well, they're not attacking with a creature this turn. They don't have a creature out. We're all gonna die one day. So it's still gonna it's gonna cost seven mana to adapt now. I got oh six mana. I got the negate in there too. It's gonna cost six mana to adapt to this thing. Surge mare. The hell. You can block a surge mare, right? Good. This game's over. Okay. 
because we don't need to play anything into counter spells anymore. Basically, like all these times our opponents had one mana up, that's why I keep playing my angels because they have one mana available, kind of thing. Man, I want to really want to just draw one more land so we could play the land, adapt the incubation druid, and then have that have extra mana. Maybe I should still just adapt to the Incubation Druid. I, I mean, I love being able to resolve things, though. Cut throughout the 3-3 three, three Crisis. It's like, it's not a very efficient turn for us just playing these 3-3 these three, three Flyers. But it's just so good to get on the battlefield because, obviously, Shalai or these activated abilities or Terramander gets to adapt, this thing gets to adapt. Uh, if I if I activate Shalai, remember it will put a counter on Terramander and Druid, and then Terramander and Druid do not get to adapt after that. It's just the the problem is everything costs six, and I have five. All right, so now my opponent has mana up. I'm not casting a spell into mana, so we'll be doing this Druid here. That's the slow. It's the slow route, but it's like the the really safe route. We're taking the long route. Things just turn into five fives. I guess they only trade. All right, so I'll just adapt this Terramander now, and then after adapting the Terramander, then I'll start activating Shalai. It's possible they melody my Shalai. So do I want a canopy, crushing canopy, kill the Shalai, or, yeah. We'll do that next turn. Like, we'll untap and do that. So I want to use my mana to adapt this thing right now. All right. Took the long route, but we blinked so many of our opponent's cards, just never having to play into a counter spell. And everything, we're just very patient. And our opponent couldn't really do anything about it. Like, the best thing they could have would be, like, just a bunch of Terramanders and Tempest Gens, basically. But even if they have that, we're just going to make our creatures bigger with Shalai eventually. Yeah, that's that's a very good call. Yeah, us drawing that land on turn two won us that game for sure. We had our first two draw steps ended up being amazing. You know, the first one was the Incubation Druid, and we were thinking that was a brick, but then we drew the Breeding Pool, allow us to play that Incubation Druid, and it's history from there. So Lesnia Guildgate. Is this just a budget mana base or is this four color gates? 
Could be either. Does not look like an aggro deck now with that island. And our hand is very good against an aggro deck. How can you replace Hydroid Crasis in the deck? It's kind of hard to replace Hydroid Crasis, but I... I guess you would with... Hmm. Alright. Going for a Johnny ult. You should be proud to have come so far. Be strong. Nope, looks like four color gates. Not budget, mana base. I don't know. I don't know what you'd really want to replace. Replace it with. So we're getting these out of, like, yo, I want to get Lyra out of Gates of Blaze range, of course. I want to make it basically, I want to make it very hard for my opponent to Gates of Blaze it. Okay, sorry. So yeah. <clears throat> anyway, you'd probably just change the deck up and dismount without crisis. Like, honestly, probably the whole deck would would change without crisis. You may not play blue. Basically, crisis is the only reason to play blue. These things are too big. They don't have the turn. Like, last turn they needed to Circuitous Route. They needed a Circuitous Route last turn, and then... Um, maybe a Blaze the next turn. Alright, Binding is really good. Definitely like Baffling End. And I like Melody. You take a big Crisis. <clears throat> Let's destroy some enchantments. Disdainful Stroke counters Krasis, the 8-8, and Circuitous Route. Ah, uh, and Explosion. No, Krasis, when Krasis is on the stack, it has CMC. It adds the X to it. Yeah, it doesn't get Summit. Negate gets Summit and a Blaze and Explosion. So I kind of like Negate more. I like getting Summit, a Blaze. Especially, you know, like a Blaze, Clarion, and Explosion. The problem is, what am I taking out? So, the Angels aren't usually that good in this matchup because of a Blaze. I think I have to just kind of take out some stuff. But I'm just basically had to take out everything from my deck. It's probably worth it to play Disdainful Stroke. I didn't have a whole lot of time sideboarding as we were talking there. This is definitely the kind of matchup that Gates usually wins. Sure, I have Knight of Autumn for Guild Summit here, but I wouldn't mind countering it also. I 
or I'm going to counter that random card. They don't have Gates of Blaze next turn. Of course, the Gateway Plaza there does add red mana. They have red mana right now. Hope they don't have it to kill my Guardian. But I could minus a Johnny and bring back Guardian, I suppose. Ram's out of here. It's unfortunate we don't get to double spell at all. Or activate the Growth Chamber Guardian as well. Well, we have four Baffling and two Ixalan's Bindings in the deck, so we had six, six removal spells that would have been very good against that Ram to draw into. Dang it. Ugh. Much rather had that the previous turn. Need more removal. Okay. So better to binding the ram or the crisis. The ram is just so big. It's probably more likely they have more another crisis. If I take the, hmm. The thing is, like these things can block rams. Everybody's saying ram. How do I deal with that six six crisis though? They both trample. So I'm pretty glad I pretty glad we took the ram right about now. Okay, we got another draw. Hopefully we get a removal spell. Removal. Dang. <laughs> yeah, so I guess we were, we're... So we're drawing into three baffling ends. One binding, a melody, or one of the two Vivians. Those are our cards we could have drawn, or an Angel of Grace, or a Lyra, or one of the Lyras. Frilled Mystic didn't really seem too good, but we were just kind of behind. Or Crushing Canopy. We did have a lot of spells that we were drawing into. It was a lot of our deck. Or another Krasis, of course. Yeah, I know disdainful strokes not bad. There's we don't we're not really we don't really have any cards that are that bad right now in in the deck. 
I do I do think I like a Johnny. Maybe I'm not supposed to be playing a Johnny. I mean, Johnny's not bad when we're behind, but like we're going to hopefully try to be ahead. And Johnny's good when you're ahead in this matchup. Yeah, we do have more removal for Krasis than Ram, so I'm glad we took Ram. So you think I should play two stroke over the two of Johnny? Oh, instead of the Frilled Mystic? I'd rather have Frilled Mystic. A Johnny too slow, it won us the first game. They just have so many important cards that do not... The Disdainful Stroke doesn't hit. But I like Frilled Mystic more. You know, we can just die to Rams and Gates Ablaze and Guild Summit. And I have a lot of answers to Krasis anyway. So countering Krasis isn't that big a deal. It's basically like just Circuitous Route. I mean, like, Circuitous Route and Explosion are like the things that I want to Disdainful Stroke. I'd rather just have Frilled Mystic. Alright, good card. And we'll go for the Ajani ult again. It is true that we have not seen Explosion yet. I'm going to represent some strength here of keeping my mana available. Maybe have my opponent play around some counter spells. Hopefully they don't, you know, like basically have them not play their best card, maybe. Like potentially. We dealt two less damage. They could be at 14. That, that was the cost of representing this strength. Certainly possible our opponent had like circuitous route that they wanted to play. But they were scared of negate. Now I'd rather get the Incubation Druid in play instead of that. Because I want to play Vivian next turn, for sure. You can't stop nature. Same kind of thing here, shocking in now with a breeding pool. Meet my newest friend. 
There are a bunch of good spells that we just put on the bottom of the library, unfortunately. Just put a bunch of good spells on the bottom of the library. Every defeat is a new beginning. Basically, we'll see if we get for old mystic or not here. Come to me. Um. So no, no for old mystic. I'll activate this thing. Hey, thanks, Oris the Avenger. Got a song request. I'll take care of that here in just a second. All right, let's see what we got. Alright, here's a song request. I've seen things that would break someone like you. They get their ram back. The wild wasn't meant to be contained. <laughs> get that out of here. Vivian would have found a frilled mystic any of these times. It would have been a lot nicer. So we're going to have land on top. Presumably. Or I guess it was the negate. Ugh. No one knows the wilds like I do. Three, four, five, six. So I can either do six or eight. If I do six, if I do six, I get to keep negate up. Auto tap, you better not mess me up. Thank you. I know my Vivian's dead, but at least we'll get we'll kill their Vivian also, so they can't just like tick up and worse. find a crisis. Our Vivian isn't really important right now. That's annoying. You're not walking out of here. I'm going to Binding the Krasis, so my opponent cannot cast Krasis anymore. I'm Baffling and the Ram. And we got the Frilled Mystic, so we ha have their next spell countered. Alright, they got one spell in hand. Great game, great game. Baffling end was clutch this whole match. And we have this epic song request that's playing there. 
Ooh, what a game. Ugh, yeah. You don't usually see the opponent ultimate Vivian, and then the next turn they're like, ah, oh, good game, because they lost. Yeah, that was a slugfest. Hey, Scamos. Good game, man. Or Scamos. That, those are awesome games. Yeah, those are those are really cool. Our our crisis there that very like that second to last turn was really good to us. Our crisis gave us binding and double baffling end. We had binding, baffling end, baffling end. Um, yeah, so you you could have taken knight and crisis. It would have it would have just kind of slowed us down. We would have just we would have been pretty fine because then then even after that we drew frilled mystic and we had another crisis in hand also. Like, we were going to be fine, but... So, yeah, you didn't really have too good of a choice. We drew really, really well at the end of the game. Uh, <clears throat> there. Yeah, you could have could have ticked up Vivian instead of ultimated. I guess, yeah, the ultimate didn't really matter too much. That could have been an option, just tick up Vivian to look for another card. So. Yep, it's two dollars for a song request. Yeah, honestly, using the the Spotify link actually is better because I I can't actually use YouTube for how I'm. You know, I used to use YouTube, but used to be able to use it, but for how I'm doing, so I actually have to go search for the song on Spotify. <clears throat> but yep, that's always an option. Okay, we are four and one. Um, just that never got to show the changes. I only run two Crisis, no Colossus, and I run Rhythm of the Wild. Okay, yeah. So yeah, you don't have very much to tick up into at all then. Okay, you're okay. Cool. Well, yeah, very good match there. All right, so yeah, thank, thanks for the song request there. All right, let's get the final boss playlist up and running. And yeah, so your choices made sense for sure. Final boss playlist running. Get your final boss emotes there in the chat. I have 10 songs here in the final boss playlist. Nice. So there's the final boss playlist as like a link. I've never had that like actually as a link. It's just 10 songs, but that's the link to the 10 songs. It's 10 songs right now. That'll likely grow. So what do we got? Hinchelin Harbor Forest. Not too scared of throwing down this Growth Chamber Guardian. Uh, looks like another Nexus opponent. That's a great hand. On the play, have Wellness Reclamation already in play. That's pretty good. The Lost Songs, the Lost Wood song is so good. All right, so they already have infinite mana. And I have three mana. And they have 15. It's pretty close. Their turn four, they have 15 mana. And I have three. Growth Chamber Guardians is bigger than... <clears throat> it's 
bigger than Resplendent Angel. So just playing that. I guess I could play Jade Light to look for more lands. I wanted to get the big creature in play. Because obviously they're going to win a late game. Whatever the spell was, they kept it. Kind of feels like it's a counter spell. I don't think I really want my opponent to cast their Sinister Sabotage and scry one. Oh, is Teferi? Huh. Okay. Her, trust they kept Teferi so without white mana? Alright. I suppose that's a thing. So now we, we don't know that they kept that because they just drew the random card off Teferi. If I would have played Growth Chamber Guardian last turn, I would have had Lethal here, at least, to represent. Suppose that's how it was meant to happen. Fortunately, now they get four as Kanta activations. I don't think we can win anymore, right? Four as can't activations. I don't. I don't think it's possible to win. I guess if I don't attack to fairy, they didn't have that extra card for us can't. I think they were at six anyway. I think. I think they were at six. I don't know. Alright, sideboard. Let's get some counter spells up in here. Some disenchants. Get our 13 card sideboard in. I do like how Angel of Grace is instant speed, though, with, like, the flash. So, like, if we're holding up Mystic or Negator to Stainful Stroke or whatever, and they don't play anything, we get to flash an Angel of Grace. I do like that. Thinking about taking out a Resplendent, a Jade Light, or an Ajani. I wonder if Familiar is better than Resplendent. All right, down a game. Backs against the wall.
Of course, not playing that creature that one turn when our opponent ended up having to ferry and not a. Uh, you know, they didn't have. They, they had to ferry, they didn't have a counter spell. And. Play this for two or a Johnny? What's this for two? They didn't have the counter spell. I didn't play a creature. That not playing the creature kind of made me not have lethal a previous turn. All right, so we need another blue source for Frilled. I'd like to draw just any land at all. That's a good. That's good. So I can Knight of Autumn here and still have Negate. Could just wait and crush in Canopy. is annoying. See the way being the two mana there. That was just all all in all a bad turn for us for sure. Really should have waited with the crushing canopy. I went with we went with Vivian there because if we draw a land we'd have Knight of Autumn plus Frilled Mystic. We did not get that land. I just I can't afford the Night of Autumn to get count to get countered anymore. Just cast a fairy. Oh, we also have the mana to cast a Nexus of Fate as well. No big deal. Please brick on this turn. So I can kill this as Kanta. Mm -hmm. 
Hopefully they drew land land. You know, like they they explored one land there. Hopefully this is another land. If they brick he here, I can at least destroy the Ascanta. And we can go from there. And I'm not, you know, dead. Yeah, I don't know what our opponent's doing now. They had been playing quite fast before. It's possible they got disconnected. Kind of like what, you know, like what happened to us yesterday when we were playing uh, game three, remember? And then my computer suddenly shut off. It's possible our opponent's computer just suddenly shut off or something. They got disconnected. That's what it does look like a, a disconnect. So just, you know, wait, see what happens here. This is their last time out. So yeah, the plan is next turn to Knight of Autumn the Escanta and spend three to uh, adapt the Growth Chamber Guardian. If we draw another land, I'll probably just play the Ajani and put a counter on the Growth Chamber Guardian and Knight of Autumn. They're back. All right, just kind of testing to see if they do anything first. Okay, so we're still in the game for now. Anything to change. So we've seen Seal Away. I don't think so. Let's run it back. Don't know about a Johnny still. Could certainly see that I should be cutting a Johnny. It would just be for like Resplendent Angel and Biomancer's Familiar. I play like one of each of those over the two of Johnny's. So I have a Crushing Canopy. In this hand, I think that's okay. I love that. Uh, you know, I was worried about the the double tap land, but I I definitely like incubation druid of speeding us up too. The gate's a good draw. No, no attacks. Hey, Onion Belt with the Twitch Prime sub. Sub number four on the day. Welcome to the channel, Onion Belt. Let's get some hype for our, <laughs> for our new subscriber. And let's get that sub battle countdown down even farther, down to 145.
All right, more mana. So I could Vivian with negate available. But obviously they have Frilled Mystic also. Start getting the beatdowns in. Wow, what a card! What a card. What a beating. Man, that Debbie attention was such a beating. I was going to be playing a, a big crisis the next turn. And still, you know, having some mana up. Yeah, and I, do, I don't have an answer to Frilled Mystic. I don't know, what am I doing? Just nothing? That was just such a big beating. So let's say I play the angel, they just kill the frilled mystic. Or like, you know, counter it, not kill it, but obviously counter it. Uh They get another turn, of course. Such a close game. That deputy play is being incredible for him. Racist gets to draw. A lot of cards. Beasts. Sometimes restoration means retribution. So I just want Vivian on the battlefield. Um, I'm not attacking with Respl Resplendent Angel here. I think that's certainly something that some people may have just attacked with Resplendent Angel. But the problem with attacking with the Angel is that if my opponent has a Nexus, then my Vivian's dead, because then they get to attack Vivian for one, and then Nexus, then attack Vivian for one again and kill Vivian. So definitely do not want to attack with the Resplendent Angel. Alright, and that's Wilderness Reclamation number two. They're down to four, and now five cards. Uh. Let's hold that thought. This 
looks very terrible for us. Balance comes. Let's see. I mean, if the crushing canopy get, gets countered. I know what to do. We're just so dead. Just doesn't really even matter what we do. Might as well just draw a couple cards. I just feel like no matter what we play is going to get countered. When the next set comes... Can we still buy from the set that has left? Yes. Yeah, the next set, yeah, all everything will still be in standard. No you can still purchase packs from any set. Like right now, you can still buy packs from Ixalan and all the other sets and everything like that. So they're attacking me, which means they have Nexus, which means I'm dead. The deputy of detention really killed me this game. So, no, the next set's not the last one before rotation. You have uh, War of the Spark, which is going to be our next set that will be coming out. And then we will have, uh, after that, Core Set 2020 uh, later on this summer. And then this fall will be a brand new set, and that is the, whenever the set from the fall happens, then we will uh, have rotation after that. So we did not get there. The amount of mana that we could have gotten from our uh, incubation druids was going to play a big role in that game for us. But our opponent had the W attention and then just kind of Went off from there. So. We went one and one against that Simic Nexus deck with ours, which isn't so bad. Considering our game one is horrendous. And so going one and one means we won like, you know, three out of the four post support games kind of thing. So that's pretty good. Uh, overall, our deck worked pretty well. For the most part, we want to play against aggro, and we didn't really face very many aggros. We saw, like, mono blue, you know, but uh, we didn't face a whole lot of aggro decks. And so the fact that we were keeping up with control and with Nexus, which is matchups that would be kind of our worst, is a good sign. Of course, you can tell by the sideboard how I had so, much, so many things to bring in is that I was really focused on those kind of decks after sideboard. But... Uh, overall, it worked out pretty well. All right, so that's Bant Familiar. So if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button over there. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.